Hello, I'm Becky. Welcome to my kitchen. There's something very special about homemade cakes and filling your house full of that wonderful smell. So I thought I'd show you how to make a Victoria sandwich. So you're going to need two sandwich tins that match. Mine have got loose bottoms, but it doesn't matter if yours are fixed. And we're going to line these and grease them. So the first thing to do is put your tin on the greaseproof paper and draw around it on the outside and then we're going to cut that out. So here we go. Cut just on the inside of the line, otherwise it could be too big. And this will make sure that your tin, your cake comes out of your tin really easily, with no problems with sticking. There we are. Next thing to do is grease the tin. The sides are particularly important and then a little bit in the base just to hold the paper still. So in goes that one and then we've got our second one. So your tins are ready. So I've got my oven on already to gas mark five which is 190 degrees Celsius, 170 if yours is a fan oven, but we're gonna work on our ingredients. So I've got 150 grams of soft margarine and 150 grams of caster sugar. Remember you can pause this video at any point if you want to write something down or check what you've got in your cupboard. We're going to start to mix and this is called creaming. You can do it with a wooden spoon and you simply squash the margarine and the sugar together. Now it takes a while. So actually, if you use an electric mixer, you'll get it done more quickly and more thoroughly. This is going to be noisy. Are you ready? Oh, no it's not. Oops, if you turn it on. <laughs> As you can see, it's a lot paler and this is the most important part of making this cake. The paler you can get the margarine and sugar, the lighter the cake will be. That's about right. It's a lot paler than it was. so. Get rid of my beaters, not waste anything at this stage, so clean those off and then we're going to turn to the eggs. So for this amount, which is 150 of margarine, 150 of caster sugar, you're going to use three eggs and it's always good to have them at room temperature, otherwise there's a risk that it will curdle and you'll get something that looks a bit like scrambled eggs, which we'll never do. Three eggs. One at a time, and that way you can check there's no shell in there. So first egg. So we've got all three eggs in there and we're going to beat those in. do for that. And then next it's self-raising flour, so 150 grams of self-raising flour, just the same as the caster sugar and the margarine. And that goes in too. Ready? Now you might have noticed that I've got my bowl sitting on a rubber mat and that stops it from slipping on the work surface. But if you haven't got a rubber mat, you can use something like a tea towel. A damp dishcloth would do the same trick, same job. There we are, you're done. So again, clean off the beaters. Don't waste any of the mixture. And this is a very versatile mixture. You can use this for all sorts of things. You can make little cakes with it. You can make a lemon drizzle cake. You can do a pineapple upside down cake. So once you've mastered this, you'll feel confident to then move on to using the same mixture for something else. And you can actually make it into chocolate. Pear and chocolate upside down pudding is wonderful. Now this is ready to be shared between the two tins and I tend to do it on a basis of one for you, one for me. So we scrape round, we get a good scoop, one for you, one for me. One for me, and 
we'll get as much out of here as we can. Now, I don't mind people using their fingers and I don't mind doing it myself to scrape off a spatula, but one thing I will never do is lick my finger. There is something quite unpleasant about the thought of eating raw egg, I'm afraid. So now, we spread this, try and get it up to the edges, turn it as you go, smooth it a bit, it will level itself in the oven. But the reason we're using straight-sided tins is because if you have angled sides, your cake will rise to a point. And then when you put the two together, they don't sit very well. You sometimes have to trim a bit off. So this way, you get two flat-topped cakes ready for the oven. 20 minutes, gas mark five. So they've had their 20 minutes. I've got my cooling rack ready and I just need to reach in with the oven mitts and not burn myself. There's the first one and here comes the second. Now the reason I can tell that they're cooked is that they're well risen, they're firm to the touch, springy and not soft, and they've actually begun to shrink away from the sides of the tin. That's a very good sign that they're, they're done. So there we are, that's that. Now if you're not sure if they're cooked, if you're not convinced, you can always test them with a skewer. And really they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes very fat flat ones, very skinny long ones. This is my favourite. And you go into a hole that's already there, a bubble. You go down to the bottom where the tin is and then you bring it out. And if it's absolutely clean, you're convinced, you're sure your cake is then done. Now, we've got to get it out of the tin. So, oven mitts on. Blunt knife, because it's just more efficient, it does the job better, all the way around the edge. You greased it so it shouldn't be stuck, but we want to just be sure. All the way around. And now we're going to turn it over. This is where you have to have a bit of confidence. Ready? Over. Second one. Go. Tin off. And you see how easily that's come out because we greased our tins. Base as well. Now, the paper needs to come off. And then we want to get them the right way up. You can do it by using another cooling rack. And you've probably got one in your grill pan. So borrow that for the time being, lay it on, and then turn the whole thing over cakes are now both the right way up. That means you can decide which one you want to be the base, which one you want to be the top. They need to cool and then we'll fill them. The cakes have been out of the oven for a little while now and I need to make sure they're cool enough to have the jam spread on them. So I'm going to test them with the back of my hand because it's more sensitive and they're virtually cold. I have to choose which one's going to be the base. Uh, I think it's this one. So I lift it up, turn it over, and that's going to go onto my cake plate. And I'm going to put some strawberry jam on. This strawberry jam is quite soft, so it's ever so easy to spread. And it's up to you how much you put on. Some people like quite a lot. Make sure it goes all the way to the edge, because it looks prettier. That's three tablespoons. I think that's probably enough. Just use the back of the spoon to spread it to the edges. Don't really want it running down, but if it does, it's not the end of the world, is it? Right, that's the jam. Now the top one comes up and sits on top. There we are. Next thing to do is to put some icing sugar on the top to make it just look beautiful. Right, icing sugar for the top. I'm going to use a little sieve, and it's not a tea strainer, it really is a little sieve. That helps to make sure we haven't got any lumps. You really won't need a lot. I shouldn't imagine you'll need that much, but here we go. There we are. Beautiful Victoria sandwich, ready to be sliced and eaten with a cup of tea. 
So let's see how it looks inside. I'm going to turn it a little bit to get the other edge of the slice. There we are. What do you think of that? Thank you for watching this video. I hope it inspired you to make a Victoria sandwich cake. Watch out for more videos coming soon. Bye.